What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna be getting started on the storage system for the back of Amanda's 4Runner. It's gonna be out of 8020 extruded aluminum, just like the rear seat delete I did in my truck. So we'll get right to it. Just to give you guys an idea of where we're headed, it's gonna be one single drawer that spans the whole back cargo area of the 4Runner. And those are our dimensions here. I will kind of go into depth about each cut piece and everything like that. And I'll actually probably go ahead and post a screenshot of the complete parts list for you guys. So you can order all these parts and do it yourself if you'd like to. What's not pictured on the one up there is you can see this is one by two extruded aluminum, kind of a base below the drawer. And that's gonna actually be a table that slides out. Um, and it's gonna be about the same size as the top of this. So it's gonna be a big area. It's gonna be a nice place to cook and to prepare things and do whatever while you're camping. So kind of a feature that we're really looking forward to on this build. If you're not familiar with the extruded aluminum, just think of it as almost like wood, except for it's more pieced together like Legos. There is tapped ends, you buy it cut to length. And I got that from tnuts.com. Start off this build, we're gonna get our eight corner connectors because we are going to be making this front face. So four of your 39 and a half inch one by one. And then also you're gonna need four of your 11 inch one by one. And these are 10 series extruded aluminum, just to clarify. Okay, so first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is grab your 39 and a half inch pieces. And then each 39 and a half inch piece is going to get tri-corner cube on each one. And they will just be secured by the included screws. With our four pieces assembled with our corners, next we're going to work on the uprights, which is our 11 inch pieces. And basically you're going to sandwich these 11 inch pieces uh, between two of the ones that we just assembled to create the face. So this would be the face of the drawer laying face down as it is right now. One thing to add here, these are going to be our plates which are going to secure our bars, which are gonna run through the length of the drawers. And those are actually gonna be what our slides attached to. Because of the uh, style of these nuts, before you go ahead and put this one on top, just go ahead and drop in this. And later on, we're gonna use this to secure the other piece of extrusion. And just to show you, this is a piece of extrusion that I'm talking about. So that little plate is gonna bolt on the sides here and here, and allow us to have a bar for the slides to attach to. Next on the list is our four 32 inch pieces, which are gonna be this one, this one, and then same on the other side. And those both have the tapped ends. The ones, the 32 inch pieces without the tapped ends are gonna be the ones for our slides, which we're gonna be putting into the equation after we get the main structure of the box assembled. So basically, first off, I have one of our faces uh, laying face down. I'm gonna grab your 32 inch piece uh, go ahead and let that hang off the table just a little bit so you have access to the hole underneath of there. And you're just going to rest it right on top. And then from there you have access to your threaded hole through the bottom off our overhanging edge. And then go ahead and screw all four of those uh, into one of your faces here. Just like we did when we put these plates in here to prepare for the future when we mount those side plates, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and drop in two on the top and two on the bottom on each one of these, so on the outside. So there's gonna be two on this outside face, two on this outside face, and then same for that side. And we're doing that because our sliding drawer module, these are gonna be what attached uh, the main module to that. And then these are gonna be used at the very end as anchor points to secure it to the truck itself.
What I've done here is just flip this back over on the ground, and now I'm gonna put our top face on here. All right, so you're looking at the very front here. These are the sides. You can see our double nuts are gonna be for our drawer slides are gonna mount. Um, and just when I thought I hadn't forgot to add any nuts to the rest of the system, I remembered I had these crossbars, two of them in the center across here. So I went ahead and threw in two more nuts and two more screws in this rail on the inside edge for the very top surface. And we're gonna need those nuts to secure our bars uh, in there for bracing. All right, so you saw me do these top bars, it kind of tilts it up on its face to assemble it, made things a little bit easier. Went ahead and 32 divided by three, which is, this is a 32 inch bar. Got about 10 and a half, so I went and put a mark here and here, same on the other side. Secured their bars, you know, so it splits it up into three sections. Lid will have nice support. It's gonna be half inch hardwood plywood, so it should be plenty strong as is. Next up is two more 32 inch pieces of extrusion, one by one. We went ahead and affixed our side plates here, which are gonna hold our extrusion that's gonna hold our slides. Went ahead and did both front and back on both sides. And next, we're just gonna go ahead and stand those up in there with our T-slot nuts and our rails and go ahead and secure that down. As you saw, we got our bars that our slides are gonna be mounted to. I went ahead and centered those at five and a half inches, so the center of our 11 inch bar. Okay, so these are some 100 pound slides, full extension, 32 inch. Uh, I got these off Amazon, and they had some good reviews, they're ball bearing, you know, all that good stuff. People seem to say that they were actually seem like they could hold more weight than they were rated for. I don't really plan to put more than 100 pounds of stuff in here, but uh, it's just nice knowing you got something heavy duty. The way we're gonna mount it to this one by one extrusion is are these drop in T nuts. So unlike those other nuts we were dealing with, these you can drop in after the fact. You don't have to slide it in from the end. You can just drop them in and they end up in there just like that. We're gonna attach them with 3 8 uh, quarter 20 thread screws. So I also got these from tnuts.com and they are the perfect length. I decided to order these on chance and see if they worked and they work out perfect. So quarter 20 thread, three eighths screw, the perfect one to mount a slide to some extrusion with these T-nuts. Basically all I'm gonna do is my slide's gonna be flush with that edge right there. So I kind of lay it on its back and put these T-nuts where they're gonna line up with the holes that I'm gonna use. And then you see this fingernail polish here. So instead of like Loctite, fingernail polish can also act like Loctite, uh, just doesn't hold as hard. So I'm gonna put some fingernail polish on these screws. It's a trick that is carried over from like gunsmithing and stuff like that. If you watch my last video, you'll have ever heard me say that, but it's a nice trick. So we'll go ahead and get these slides mounted on both sides. All right, as far as drawer slides go, for the main module, those are all mounted up. And you can see they're all nice and smooth. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the way because the next thing this thing needs is actually some woodwork. So we're gonna put this aside and then we're gonna start working on the sliding table that will be underneath of this in the back of the Forerunner. All right, so for the sliding table portion of this, the sliding table is actually what you see that's inside of these two outside ones. So these two outside ones are 34 inch one by two 
So basically it's the same depth as the whole drawer system and these are going to mount directly to the bottom of the drawer system. Table slide itself, we got two 38 and a half one by one, which is one up here, one down here. And then we got a 36 and a half one by one for the center support. And then our side runners are going to be 31 inch one by one. And we're basically just going to secure all this stuff together with these corner connectors. They're a lot cheaper than the tri corner connectors. And we're going to clean up the ends and make it look nice with these plastic caps. And then also we're going to put a handle on the front. So when you unlatch it, you can pull the table out or slide it in with this handle. All right, so there's a the frame of our table slide all put together. As you can see, it was just six of these corner brackets and some of those slotted nuts that we've been using this whole rest of the build. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and attach our handle. We're gonna go ahead and center it up here. All right guys, here's a general idea of what it's gonna look like with the slide sitting underneath of the drawer module. As you see, this is actually sitting down flush with this first level. It's actually going to be about halfway up. So I'm going to have to actually drill some holes through the middle of this extrusion, this one by two. And that way I can mount these slides right in the middle, which will allow these to mount right in the middle of this. And it'll be halfway in between this two inch and then that whole platform will be able to slide out nicely. Picked up the hardware that we're going to use to attach the slide to our one by two. As you can see on this one, I've already drilled some holes there and that's what it's gonna mount to. I'm using 10 32nd thread and inch and a half long stainless steel. It's gonna be the perfect length for that and there's gonna be a washer on the outside and then a lock nut. So what I've done is I've laid the slide on top of the piece of one by two like I planned to have it sit, which is flush with this edge, not flush with the cap, but flush with the edge. And then I've taken some clamps, picked up my holes here, and I'm just gonna go ahead with a drill bit and punch through. All right, with our slides mounted to our one by two, we went ahead and separated the slides. With these type, you simply just hold the lock down and you can pull it all the way out and it will become separate from the rest of the slide. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in some of these T-nuts like that. We're gonna use the same screws we used to mount our slides to our other extrusion. We're gonna go ahead and mount these to the side of our pullout table. And then once these are mounted, we can slide them back into their slides on our one by two, and then our table module is mostly complete for the moment. I actually have some leftover aluminum from my trailer builds and that's what I'm gonna attach to this top surface as my tabletop. Figure the aluminum, you can put a stove, hot things on there, it doesn't matter. All right guys, we're gonna get started cutting the wood for the actual drawer itself. What this is, is just a half inch, it's like a maple hardwood plywood. It's sold and marketed as for creating cabinets or furniture. Baltic birch is also another good choice. Baltic birch is a lot more expensive and also hard to find. Uh, I really don't have anybody local to me I can even get Baltic birch from. And the maple does well um, and it's good stuff. So I had to get two pieces of plywood. This is two four by eight because I was redoing my truck drawers and the Forerunner drawers at, at the same exact time. And I was laying out my cuts before I actually made them, you know, get most out of my wood. This one sheet of four by eight 
it looks like you may be able to get away with one sheet to do this build. And I, of course, had to get two sheets for both builds. So I think one sheet of 4 by 8 you might be good. Um, you may have to get another little like 4 by 4 to get the other face. Basically what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set up a time lapse. Me, I'm going to go ahead and get all these pieces cut. All right, we got all of our pieces cut. I'm just gonna tell you the sizes as we install them. So this is the bottom of our drawer and it's 32 inches by 37 and a half inches. And then our drawer side, so there's gonna be two of these. And this is 32 inches by 10 inches tall. So basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna attach it to the side of our bottom plate. What we're gonna be using to attach it to finish nailer and then some wood glue. Now there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. I know you can do dovetail joints and, and all that other stuff like that. This is just a very simple and effective way uh, that's gonna attach this. There's different ways you can look up how to combine two pieces of wood like that, but this is the route that I'm choosing. All right, with our side uprights attached, next we're gonna do our front and back. This front isn't actually gonna be the front face of the drawer that you see. It's just gonna be what kind of ties this all together. And then there will be another panel that we're gonna install after that, uh, that will actually be the front face that you see on the front of the drawer. Each of these pieces are 37 and a half inches wide and nine and a half inches tall. All right, so now we're gonna work on our drawer face. Uh, we're gonna need to sink this into the front. And so what I'm gonna do here is I've measured exactly half uh, between this front drawer face, which is about 19 and three quarters or so. And now that I got that measured, I can actually, so this is from the first set of drawers I used. I wasn't happy with the wood choice. So, but it turns out that it ends up still being a pretty good stencil for stuff like this. So I know the center of this, I know the center of this, so I'm gonna line these up and I'm gonna take my pencil and trace this out, uh, and then I can take my router and cut that out. I placed the latch about a quarter of an inch down from here, and that allows this striker to still come in contact with the extrusion above the drawer. All right, we got the box all sanded up and everything like that. We're gonna kind of get it all test fit. So what I've done is I had some spare quarter inch wood um, that I just kind of shoved under here to kind of space it up a little bit. That way it has clearance from that to slide out. Um, and now it's just kind of sitting in the position that it's gonna be sitting in. Now that we've got our hole cut in our face, all I've done is just put it up here where it's gonna be. And then took a pencil and transferred the hole over to our drawer. And then we're going to have to pull the drawer out and then router this little bit out as well. All 
All right, so what I've done here is I've made my gap even on both sides. I put the drawer face on this, and then I went ahead and installed our handle. This piece isn't gonna stick out like that in the end. It's just temporary. But anyways, it's gonna hold our face to our drawer, which is gonna allow us to pull the drawer out some and run some finished nails through the face and into our sides here to finally secure it. Gonna work on getting our slides all attached here. First thing I've done is I've supported it with quarter inch like I have been in the past, so it's consistent. And I pulled the drawer out some, and then I pulled my slide out. And I actually, before I did that, I measured the distance between this inside face and where the slide starts when it's in the closed position. Made a mark, pulled it out to there. And now I'm gonna choose our vertically slotted hole here because, and we're gonna drill in the bottom. So then that way, when we do that, we can actually pick up the drawer a little bit. So then it's not gonna be resting. This face isn't gonna be resting on that extrusion like it was. Uh, and then from there, we can make all of our adjustments and make it all nice and square, and it'll roll in and out nice and smooth. All right, so next we're gonna route the edges on the top. Uh, to show you what I'm talking about, I'm also simultaneously building that second drawer system for my truck. If you haven't seen the first video, video of uh, complete DIY just like this, of uh, rear seat delete in a Tacoma. So you see how this corner has a nice beveled edge and it ends up just making it look super clean. And of course this is gonna get raptor line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the top for our forerunner system. And then after that, we can kind of set it on top and get an idea of what it's going to look like. All right, guys, we got the top sitting up here. Just make sure everything looks like it fits good. See those beveled edges turn out real nice. Basically, now it's down to disassembling. Not the whole thing, but actually just pulling the drawer out, take the latch out, and then I'm gonna seal all the wood that's not gonna get wrapped aligned with some Danish oil. Basically, you just rub it on with a rag. And then after that's done, it should be warm enough tomorrow to where I can actually wrap the line. I'm gonna wrap the line this and the drawer face itself. And then everything else will be a wood finish. So we'll get right to it. With everything all sealed, uh, next we're gonna move on to raptor lining. As you can see, I've taped off everything I don't wanna be painted, but that plastic should ask as a nice buffer so I can paint those faces on all the drawers. And then of course, also our tops and everything like that. And keep in mind, I'm, also, I'm doing two different drawers right now. That's why there's so many, uh, so many pieces of wood. So you can either roll this stuff on with like a paint roller, or you can shoot it on with a regulated air gun. That's the method I prefer. You can kind of choose the texture, the higher the pressure, the finer the grain. And then also you get a nice even coat. I have rolled it on before on something that I didn't care about it looking as nice and it still turned out great. You could probably be just fine rolling it if you don't have the means to shoot it with the compressed air. All right guys, we're getting to the final stages of the build here. Top's all nice and cured. What I've done is I've gone around because we're gonna start drilling our holes in the top and I've gone around and marked an inch and a half from this corner, an inch and a half from this corner. because I'm gonna do two on each corner. Then I went halfway and marked here and it's 17 inches. So I'm gonna do one screw there as well. So two on all the corners, 
one on each side and I'm going to see how that plays out. I'm going to try to avoid doing any up front so we have a nice smooth surface up front but we'll just kind of see how that works. Now what I'm going to do to be able to drill my holes nice and square is I previously made this jig. If you've seen from my other build video I kind of explained it a little more in depth but basically it allows me to butt up against here and when I drill a hole that hole ends up lining up perfectly with the slot under there. So then you can take your screw and your T-slot and end up bolting this upper panel down to the top of your unit. Then as you see with our board off, where we drilled, it leaves a little mark inside the extrusion. So then you can put your T-slot nut in and line your hole up right with your mark. So when you put your board back on, it's easy to line them up and go ahead and screw them down and tighten them up. So that's installation of the latch. This is just to show you what it looks like when it comes out of the box. You can see I flattened that bow tie piece out and then I removed this bolt completely because the clearance between here and here ends up being perfect for the extrusion. All right, now that we got our latch installed and everything assembled, I set the drawer module on top of the table module and you can see I've attached it with those little strips that I was talking about previously. There's two on each side, and then I've also put my anchor points here on each side as well. I did have to drill this out to be able to fit the turnbuckle, um, but just a little bit. So here is our aluminum sheet that we're gonna use for the table. And it is 38 and a half inches this way and 33 inches this way. And that'll cover this whole top surface here. So what you see this red tape, it's actually 3M VHB tape. And I've used it on my other trailer builds to stick to fender liners and this stuff's absolutely awesome. So basically what I'm going to do is I've stuck, it's one inch, I've stuck it all to this part of the table. I'm going to peel the red off this and then I'm going to set this aluminum skin on top of this and it will be a permanent bond that won't rattle, don't have screws to come loose, anything like that. It'll just be permanently attached to this because this stuff is, is not easy to peel up once it's set in place. I need some turnbuckles from Track Supply and then some carabiners from Track Supply as well and hooked to the factory D-rings in the front here. And there's actually two in the back and I think I'm gonna rig up a way to hook to those as well. But here we're gonna show you guys how it functions. And then our table. And that locks in the open position. So even if you're on a hill, um, it's going to lock open and not be able to slide back on you. To shut the table, you do have to hit these on each side. And then you can shut it with one hand. I actually deleted, there was locks that made you have to hit those latches to be able to open it. And I deleted those locks at the beginning. So it's able to just be opened with one hand, um, closed with two. These are the Sidio design crates that I actually... I made these drawer to a dimension where I knew that they would fit side by side like this. Um, and I went ahead and got four of them. So it leaves some space up front just from other miscellaneous stuff. But these crates are pretty cool. I mean, they have dividers that you can move all along. So you can really organize your stuff. 
Uh, this poly mat that I have in the bottom of this crate, I'm actually going to be doing the whole bottom of the drawer in. Um, I just did that one crate because I went on a trip and wanted it done. But yeah, I mean, these things should really help organize the drawer and really just kind of bring the whole thing together. All right, guys, as always, thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. It means a lot to me. So if you go ahead and like and subscribe, if you're not already, that'd be great. Uh, share the video with your friends and we'll see you next time.